Hey guys, welcome back to another Innocerta Modeler. It's now time to start our Spindrift build. Alright guys, well I'm going to go ahead and get started here with this model. This is again the uh, Mobius Models version of the Spindrift from Land of the Giants. Alright, just a brief look at a project that I completed last year. This is Mobius Models smaller version of the Flying Sub. And if you recall, this was my first attempt at creating a base with a um, water feature. And uh, so I bought this model actually the same time I purchased the Spindrift here. And I've always intended to create this as a sister project, if you will. And so I've already gotten started. Uh, first thing I'm working on here are the engines. And what I'm doing is I'm in the process of drilling out these small little holes. Now there's a photo etch set made by Photographics that uh, currently is unavailable, but it is meant to replace these pieces here, and it comes with the holes already drilled out. Uh, but because that's unavailable, I want to get this project started. I'm not going to wait for that. Uh, and besides, it's not very difficult to do, although it can be a little tedious. Uh, of course, the reason I'm doing all of this is to accommodate the lighting. All right, so here we have now the lighting kit that I purchased from ModelTrainSoftware.com. If you watch a television show, you would notice that the engines would pulsate on and off. And uh, the closest I could find um, as to a lighting kit that I could purchase that would do that is this one here. Uh, this is their Lighthouse kit, and it ramps up and down. And uh, the only thing I wish is that it would cycle a little bit faster. There are some different options you can get as to the color of the LED, and I chose red because that's what we see on a television show. I'll show you how this works here shortly. In the meantime, let me go ahead and get back to finishing these holes here. All right, so here we now have the completed piece. All the holes are drilled out. So I'm actually going to set this and the rest of the model pieces aside for a minute here, and I want to get started on something with the display base. All right, so you can see our display base now is prepped and ready to go. Uh, I've painted it black and taped it off here. Um, I'm going to be using Plaster of Paris now to create our terrain, and as we do so, I have to... Uh, figure out where I'm going to be placing the model so that way we can uh, plan ahead for where we're going to be drilling for the lights. And then the other thing is we're going to be installing some vegetation here so I have to figure out where I'm going to be placing that as well. Alright, so this is Plaster of Paris. If you've not worked with this stuff, it's pretty easy. Uh, you can get this at Home Depot. It's not very expensive. And essentially all you need to do is take uh, two parts of your plaster here and mix it with one part of cold water. So I'm going to mix a little bit of this up and we'll start applying it to our display. So the goal here is just to get it spread out first and then I'll work at texturing it. Obviously, we don't want stroke marks and those types of things on here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this piece off here, and we're going to allow this to dry, uh, and then we'll work on this a bit more later. All right, pretty much ready to prime the model now. I uh, have the back section assembled, have the uh, seams addressed. You can tell I added some white paint on the interior there just to help with diffusion, because that's where we're going to mount the light for the engines. Uh, also took a drill and uh, opened up the holes here, this top section. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward now with priming it, and uh, after that we'll start uh, assembling more of it and putting the lights in place. Alright, so you can see the model is coming along. I have it primed now with this Steinol Res Primer, and uh, we have the interior here painted with a greenish color. I happen to have Tester's Helgrun uh, on, on hand here. The uh, interior is kind of a green tone. And uh, that way, at least when you're looking through the windows, uh, you don't see gray. You'll see a green color that somewhat matches the interior there. And uh, so the plan with the lighting is to, uh, of course, use the pulsating light for the rear section, which I'll show you how that works here shortly. Uh, but I plan to use uh, SMD lights for this front section. Uh, over the uh, passenger cabin is going to be a chip-sized SMD, so a little brighter than what's going to be in the cockpit, which will be a nano-sized SMD. Alright, so here we're going to have the upper and lower half painted orange. I ended up having to resort to using Tester's Orange. I really did like this color. Unfortunately, I just could not get it thin properly and it would spray uneven. Um, so I had to end up using Tester's color. Uh, not a lot of difference. This was just a little darker, so this would have been my preference to stick with this one. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let this settle and dry, and then we'll move on to installing the lights. 
All right, so this is lighting kit here, and it uh, comes with a switch and a battery hookup. And uh, then this is our LED here. It's a three millimeter red LED. And it is connected to this here, which is essentially the circuit that allows it to do what it does. So let me just show you or demonstrate how this pulsates here. All right, so here we now have the battery hooked up temporarily to our light, and you can see that it is cycling about every eight seconds or so. Um, I did do a light test. I didn't show you that because I have to leave you in some suspense here, uh, but it works pretty well. And um, so the plan is to go ahead and mount our light to a piece of styrene plastic that we'll be able to then glue to the floor of the spin drift. All right, so this is the idea. We just have our light now fixed onto a piece of thin styrene. We just use super glue to do that. And uh, then this can be attached to the floor back here. I figured it'd be easier to do that versus trying to attach the light on its own to the floor. So once this is attached there, we'll feed the uh, wires through this opening. And uh, then we'll start building out the rest of the interior here. So here I have our light now in position. And um, a couple things to point out here. Uh, one advantage to doing it this way, gluing the light onto a separate piece, is that um, you can take your time to let the wires fix onto this plastic piece because um, it takes a while. Since wires are movable, uh, it doesn't tend to set fairly quickly. So I was, I, all I did was I just taped the light down to uh, my cutting mat here along with the plastic piece and just glued one onto the other and just let it sit there while it dried. Um, once this is set, though, you can now um, put the plastic piece onto the model surface here, and they glue fairly quickly since there's two plastic pieces um, adhering together there. Uh, but also, the other advantage, it gives me a way to maneuver this light around and position it exactly where I want it to be. All right, and here we now have the lights for the Ford uh, pilot area and the cabin. I decided, instead of going with the chip size SMDs, to just go with the small nano-sized and I'm going to have a separate battery source for this because the 9 volt is just too bright. So we're just going to use a 3 volt. So we're going to have two switches, one to turn on the engine and the other to function the lights inside the spaceship. All right, next up now is to work with the interior. And these are the inserts that come with the kit. Just pull them out of here. And uh, this is similar to what came with the flying sub. So you just basically fold them together. There are these little tabs that you glue together. And there's one for the cabin, and then there's one for the cockpit area. And then this is the decal sheet, which I've been told can be a little flimsy. We'll see how that works out. All right, let's go ahead and put together the interior. All right, so the trick is that you have to uh, take these little tabs and glue them together. So you just have to carefully fold the piece. And uh, what I'm using is just tacky glue because it seems to adhere a little bit faster than Elmer's. All right, so here we have now the two pieces put together. Uh, one thing to make note of here is that the front section doesn't quite piece together as perfectly as you'd like. This triangular piece, for example, is a little large, so this wall doesn't quite fold along the contour as it should. However, I'm not too concerned because really the view through the front windshield is going to be a little limited. The idea here is just to be able to see some detailing on the inside. Back section folded together a little bit better. Uh, a couple things I did add was some styrene here, here, and on the back side. The sides I was uh, able to see the lettered tab, so I wanted to hide that, and so that's why I added that styrene piece on both sides. And then the back side I discovered as I test fitted this into the ship is that this is going to butt right up against the LED. So to help with light blocking, I added some styrene along here, and then I also painted it a chrome color just to help with light dispersion. And this is how it fits into the interior. Okay, so before we proceed with assembly, I'm going to go ahead and attach this decal. Well, as you can see, there are no decals on the ship, and that's because 
they really weren't looking very good. Uh, the decals had a bunch of bubbles underneath it. Uh, no matter what I did to try to remedy that situation, it did not get any better. So um, I left the striping alone and went on to the tail section, and those decals fell apart as well. So I decided to put the brakes on everything. Uh, I resanded the front section here, repainted it, and now I'm going to await a new decal sheet from a company called TSDS. Uh, they produce uh, decal sheets also from, for other Mobius models, uh, but they do have one for this one 128 scale Spindrift. So I just ordered that. I'm going to go ahead and wait those decals uh, and see what they look like when they come in. I may eventually decide to just paint the stripe. The reason I'm not proceeding with that uh, right off the bat is I'm just not confident I can make that look right. Uh, so we're just going to wait a few days and wait for those decals to get in and proceed from there. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Uh, at least this shows what I've done so far, and we'll pick up in the next one and complete the project. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here as usual or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Until the next one, take care.